Hey, it's your pal Fernbark. Man, it's been like a couple, three weeks since I've been up here to Morningwood. Got up here after work today. I'm already pooped. Anyhow, drove up and the first thing I found was a bag of trash strewn across the driveway. I think what happened was, uh, I usually like to put the trash bag in the car blasting before I take off and I think I forgot to put it in and it was just sitting on the ground and it got dragged across the driveway. It wasn't too big of a deal to uh, pick up. We'll see if the uh, trail cam caught what happened. Not him, Steve. So Dave's gonna get himself all ready to put his hammock up. We just got done cutting some firewood. There we go right there, isn't that exciting? I was gonna film it, but I mean, uh, who wants to watch two old farts chop wood? So everything has kind of gotten a little overgrown in the last three weeks. I got these dandelions everywhere. Look at that junk. So I was getting ready to weed whack these down and then Dave's telling me about his sister saying don't cut these down because bees need them to feed. And then as soon as I decided to get my weed whipper out, there's like half a dozen bees on here. And, you know, I don't want to be a bee dick. Look, here's one right here. Let me see if I can get it without getting stung. Because I'm sure you guys have never seen Ah, There it is. Look at that guy. Look how happy he is on that dandelion. The foxglove are in full effect up here right now. I'm trying to uh, walk without making too much of a commotion. So they're going mad. I should have filmed up here when I was up here a couple weeks ago. When my irises were still um, blooming. God dang, you want to talk about hard to find words. Hold a camera and walk and not trip and talk at the same time. Just saying. Although as I look at these blackberries, I kind of feel like the bees got lots of opportunities here that they can uh, use. Yeah, I'm going to be eating berries very soon. Super excited about that. I'm going to try to get right in here on this guy. I guess I should do it when it's sunny outside. Maybe I'll come back tomorrow and maybe it'll be sunny. Oh, there's a bee right there on the foxglove. More B.I. Oh, geez, those are big ones. Holy smokes. I like that one right there. Kind of a triple array. Now, the deal with these foxgloves is they are actually an invasive species. They're not native to this area. I can't remember how they were brought in here. And they are poisonous to animals. Uh, but only if they eat them. And so far, I haven't seen any animal die from this. The old wood pile starting to shrink down a little bit. Oh, not really. I got a giant pile back there. I don't think the camera's going to pick up how much. <laughs> That's like five feet high stack of wood. I just got to cut it into smaller pieces so, you know, you could burn it. Hoss. <laughs> and always restomp. <laughs> all right, we got our campfire all set up for tonight. And I'm going to try uh, some more of this black and white fire starting products. I'm going to use their wood tinder blend, if I can do it without dumping it all over the place. So basically it's small pieces of wood. It kind of smells, there's something in there. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but I'm just going to pour some over the top. I'm sure I probably don't need the second part of this, but I'm also going to use, I just want to see how it works, this light wood, which kind of looks like... Uh, Maya dust a little bit if I can get it on there without making too big of a freaking mess. Here we go. Ooh, well, that's gonna go for sure. And I was gonna light it with a uh, Bic lighter, but somebody recently did a video lighting a fire with a Bic lighter, so I won't be like a copycat. We'll see, see if I can get her going with a match. Is it gonna go? You can do it. I thought for sure this stuff would just jump. Oh, you know it's going. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but it's kind of a high. Might have to zoom in a little bit. No, the camera's got it. Good camera. Boy, you can smell it burning though. It smells pretty good. So we got our logs. We got our logs. Around the fire, ready to go. I'm just gonna go ahead and set it in there. Hopefully not disturb the whole shooting mess. 
All right, nothing to do but wait for it. Maybe get a beer. All right, looks like we got some success here. It's gonna go. Ooh, snap. So this is really weird. These were all open flowers like about an hour ago. The sun went behind the trees and they all closed up. I don't think I've ever seen that before. That's pretty bizarre. Man, look at these coals. They look like they might be perfect for cooking on, but this is actually very near like a forge level amount of heat. So they got to die down just a little bit before we can start cooking on them. I think I'm going to melt my camera. Today I'm going to make my post-apocalyptic pulled pork pie irons, which is going to involve this can of Keystone pulled pork meat. The ingredients are pork and salt. I, I think there's probably water in there too. There's a little sloshiness going on. And then I have a shelf-stable thing of barbecue sauce. So this is my post-apocalyptic because you could do this with there's no refrigeration required. Well, that's not real pretty. Oh, shit. Well, it is pretty cold out here, so the fat is definitely congealed on the uh, pork. It ain't looking super hot. I'll give you that much right now. Put a little bit of pepper jack cheese in there. Probably should have put one on the bottom. That would have been smart. I'll just put two on top instead. Do something interesting. The internet demands it. Sauteed onions. Oh. That's been done. Oh. For the first time on YouTube, sauteed onions. Sauteed onions. I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna have a real hard time proving that. <laughs> Especially since we just did it three videos ago. <laughs> oh, damn four it. Four videos ago. Yes, on this channel. Look at these babies right here. Who don't love some onions and butter. Oh, I'm ready for this. Okay, you can take it now. I'm predicting good things here. Oh my God, this solo stove, we just, it was about dead. We put like two sticks in there and right away it just zips right back up. You gotta be so careful with this thing. Dave's cooking with ghee, onions, and oh, there's some, he, he smashed the crap out of some steaks. Beat him like an FBI employee. Yeah. Give me the, give me this. Well, Dave executed the flip without the camera on, because he's not a YouTuber. And he, it smells so freaking good. Holy shit. You should smell it. Sports fans, here we go. Look at that. Perfect. All right, it's time to bust her open. Take the flat of this spatula. Ooh, she's piping hot. Dang. There we are. Ugh. 
Oops, here we are. Because the camera's backwards. Here's Jay's sandwich. Well, half of one. Got some Funyuns, which are delicious. Man, look at that. I wish you guys could smell this. It smells fantastic. I want to eat one of these Funyuns. Actually, I might not put... Okay, I'm going to take a bite of the sandwich, and I'm going to put a Funyun in it, and take a bite with a Funyun. All right, here comes the moment of truth. My pulled pork, post-apocalyptic pulled pork sandwich. Man, it's so hot in my hand, I'm not even sure. Oh, 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 it's really hot. Okay, I'm back. That sandwich is pretty hot. I'm, I'm gonna try a day sandwich which feels much cooler to the touch. Looks good though. You get some of this bread off the side a little bit, get into the meat. Mm. So much chewing. Right here we are with Dave's sandwich. He's not happy with it. I think it tastes great. He put A1 steak sauce on it, which is not something I would ever put on a piece of meat, but it kind of tastes all right in this. It kind of has a tangy tech, uh, flavor. It's okay. I don't think it's tough at all. He thinks it's a little tough. Possibly my jaws are way too fierce being trained with a Meridote. Well, it's been nine hours later. I'm going to feel safe. It's <laughs> I can eat this sandwich. God, it's still hotter and shit, though. Oh, my gosh. All right. Mmm. Cop. Mmm. Double friend breaking. Dave brought utensils made of bamboo, and I brought towels made of paper. All right, this is it. This is the time I'm gonna eat this sandwich and it's gonna be delicious. Well, it was delicious the first few times, except for scalding my mouth. Mmm. You want this badly, I know you do. What do you think, stud? Very good, still warm. It's hotter and shit. Okay, here we go. Part two of our pie iron adventure. Now, despite the fact that I had just opened up my new Havarti cheese packet, Dave decided that we should have pie iron apple pie. So I have this packet of, oh, what is this stuff? Caramels, <laughs> words, and an apple, and bread and a pie iron. You just got we cooked on the bottom there. My apples are cooked up. I rebuttered my pie iron. I'm gonna put a little sugar down so my bread has a little uh, nice brown crustiness to it. Well, that's a lot. I thought I had some cinnamon up here, but maybe I don't. If I do have it, I have no idea where it is. It's two acres, could be anywhere. What else? Oh, <laughs> put a little bit of apple down. Well, oh, those are hot. Holy shit. My hands are buttery. I'm trying to open this up. Can you help with no, I think I got her. All right, so I'm going to use this beautiful nature. Friendly bamboo knife. Do you think we need two things? Uh, no, that's gonna be enough. God dang, I don't want to come out of this cup. I tell you that much. Whoops. Oh, that's gonna be awesome. <laughs> it's it's looking good already. Mm-hmm. Oops. If I can get it out of this cup without sticking all over my freaking hands. Yeah, I'm gonna have to like cut the shit out of this video. Like all of mine. Mm. Well, that's good. We're gonna throw some more apples on top.
Oh, I forgot. We'll put a little crunch in the middle. I wonder if that's gonna work out. I'm kind of having second thoughts about it. I'm hits in there now, boys. <laughs> no. All right. There you are. Oh, my hands are so sticky. I don't even know if the camera's on. Oh, the caramel's coming out the side. Rut row. Where's my nature friendly freaking utensil? I do not want. Oh man, disaster is happening. All right, sports fans, here we are. What we're looking at is sugar, butter, caramel, and sugar. Apples. And apples. Yes. And that is it. I wish you guys could smell this. It is absolutely fantastic. Story, if I can find the button on this goddamn camera. How's it going? All right. So, we're, we're sticking to, look at this. Oh my God. It's stuck to the plate. So yeah, so we, so we have we're letting it cool down and uh, it's really cool now. Let's go ahead and cut her in half. No, absolutely no danger of burning our mouths at this point. What is it's like pitch black and shit out, so. Here, you wanna, here. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, that's really fantastic. It's delicious. Oh my God. Oh, wow. That caramel. Mmm. Mmm. The sugar on the outside. Holy shit. Oh, the nuts. Did you get the nuts? Not yet. Oh, it's funny so they just randomly yell out. <laughs> <laughs> I love the nuts in my mouth. Like For, that. that was I'll never, a phrase I will never utter again. Because I'm no longer the Morningwood Channel. Because that's a nasty that's name. One. Oh. It blends in really well with the apple. It is. It's fantastic. Mmm. All right, we could not help ourselves. We had to have another pie. Side A. Well, you, there we go, side B. Still flopped out. Side A. Side B. I'm gonna let that cool for a bit because uh, I'm tired of burning my mouth tonight. So Dave Bush crafted us a couple donuts. That's good. So to recap last night, caramel apple pie, fantastic. Be doing that again, maybe today. Absolutely. <laughs> In an hour. Got the Kelly kettle working this morning. That baby fires up in a jiff. How long did it take you to get to a boil? In the amount of time that you were gone. So in the, in the amount of time it takes you to poop, this will go to a boil. Times may vary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, your, your mileage may vary. <clears throat> well, the Kelly Kale probably won't. <laughs> your bear. personal time yeah. might. I'll make you lift it. Okay. Did you lose a stick? Put it back in. Oh. Oh, geez. Yeah, she's rolling. Well, it's about 8 o'clock in the morning. I've already had a couple cups. I'm trying out this uh, Cafe Pistello. I've had the three-in-one. I thought it was okay. This is gonna be just straight coffee. And I thought I was buying the three-in-one, but I didn't. Boy, it's really powdery. Anyhow, I got that and I got my uh, sweet and condensed milk. So we're kind of three-in-one in it anyways.
All right, since uh, my statistics now indicate 7.8% of my subscribers are female, I thought we'd bring a little uh, gun show to Morningwood. Unfortunately, we're only featuring small arms today. Renogy sent me this PWM charge controller to try out, which is pretty nice. It's waterproof, which allows me to mount to outside my uh, uh, little generator box right here. I call this the apocalypse box. And here's my uh, PV uh, photovoltaic cutoff switch right here. So I can secure power to the charge controller. And then inside the box, I have uh, two sets of batteries. So this is one 12 volt battery and these two connected together are another 12 volt battery. And I have a, uh, I can isolate either battery bank and then also isolate it from the charge controller. And I got a little circuit breaker over there. Well, I'm used to using an MPP charge controller and uh, I forgot that the PWMs don't uh, let you use high voltage like the MPPTs do, high voltage being relative. So uh, I had these all hooked together in series, uh, but they're putting like 80 volts and like four amps, but uh, that's too much voltage. That little charge controller can only take 24 volts or is it 23.4? Either way, it was way too much. So what I had to do is I picked up these uh, combiner cables so I can hook my panels together in parallel instead of series, and I'm gonna have more amps and less volts. All right, I got them all hooked together. I'm gonna turn the power back on, and I should be getting indicator lights indicating power's coming in. Yep, there we go. My solar just turned on and it's charging the batteries. Let's see if I can touch the... Okay, I'm putting six amps in. Well, what we got here is my watering system. That's kind of a, a handyman special hookup here. But I got two different hoses. One's an underground drip. And then uh, this one right here is a above ground sprinkler thing. And I'm gonna see if I got uh, everything hooked up here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on for three minutes. Oh, wait a minute, I gotta go back to reset. And we'll see. So far nothing. Shit. Oh, is it open? Yeah, it's open. Why don't you wanna? Well, there we are. <laughs> All right, using some of the uh, indigenous resources to the area, I decided to mount my uh, 360 degree sprinkler on a pole. I think I'm gonna get more coverage. Not real sexy looking. 